I'm RJ Gross, Upland Game Biologist for the North Dakota Game and Fish. So coming in, you know, we'll back up. Everyone remembers how bad the winter was, you know, 100 inches of snow pretty much spread throughout the state. That gave a lot of extra moisture that we really needed, you know. Last fall was pretty good for precipitation and, you know, the habitat, grass, everything really grew up nice and then all that snow. So the spring, all that excess moisture, residual moisture, uh, the habitat came up really good for nesting and brood rearing, uh, you know, and we got pre precipitation, shots of rain throughout the season. And, you know, none of those really, you know, the big hail storms, gully washers as we call them, um, throughout the nesting and brood rearing season, you know, it ended up being, you know, it's, it's still nice lush green, you know, it's excellent, good to excellent habitat conditions across the state. No, you know, that's a, a big question that we've had from a lot of people. From this winter, how did pheasants survive? If everyone's gonna compare it to 1997, you know, that's the last time we had over 100 inches of snow. And, Different from then, we didn't have, you know, those prolonged you know, negative 40 degree temperatures North Dakota is famous for, you know, and we had a good warm up in January and there were some areas that cleared. So those birds, you know, not just pheasants, you know, everything could get out there, pluck around and dig up some food. And, you know, even though it was a long winter, you know, they, they came through and we had a good population, you know, good production last year coming through. So we had, you know, kind of an excess of, of birds to, to pull through the, the winter. So the fall hunting season, you know, our biggest survey that we just completed is our late summer roadside counts. And, you know, we have about 100 of them spread out across the state pretty evenly over our four districts, uh, things like that. So it goes by eco regions and we, sp we spread out our routes across those. And we do those, they're the same 20 mile routes that we do as our crowing counts in the spring. And we do those three times throughout the survey period. And the survey period is July 20th all through August. And then we'll look at, we count everything, uh, you know, pheasants, grouse, partridge, uh, turkeys, squirrels, everything. Once you see a bird or a, a group of birds, stop the truck, get out, clap your hands, stomp your feet, get in the ditch, get your pants wet from, from those dewy, dewy grass mornings. Uh, and we'll, we'll classify male, female, um, and then if they have a brood with them, how many are in the brood and then what age structure they're at um, and we'll use that and we compare that from year to year and you know we have you know 10 year averages and we've been doing it since you know 1960s so we got pretty extensive data set that we can use to look back on but most of the, the biggest thing that everyone's looking for is that from year to year uh, how it's gonna how production is shaping up for the for the coming fall conditions this year for the survey I mean, were near perfect uh, so we look at four metrics when we're doing these surveys we look at total number of birds per 100 miles driven, number of broods per 100 miles, average brood size, how many are in a brood, and then the age ratio of juveniles to adults. Uh, with those, it was an increase statewide in all of those. Uh, starting with first with total birds per 100 miles, pheasants it was uh, 65, a little over 65 this year. That's a 61% increase compared to last year. Uh, broods was, seven and a half broods per 100 miles, which was a 70% increase compared to last year. You know, really good, and especially some areas like our Northwest and Southwest had really big increases, like 90%. Um, both of them were over 90%. Increase from last year when it comes to number of broods that we observed, so really good production. Uh, age ratio, uh, as far as juveniles to adult, was right around two and a half juveniles per adult and that was a 26% increase from last year, which is really good. And last year, if people remember, was a good year for production. And typically when, look, when you're looking at pheasants, anything over two, the population is increasing. So, you know, and looking back, you know, our heyday years, you know, 2006, 2007, uh, the two and a half, that's right along, which what used to be back then. So it was really encouraging to see. And then uh, average brood size was, uh, just a little bit over six, pretty much unchanged from last year, um, which again, last year was really good production. And anything over six uh, indicates good to excellent production. Not our traditional areas like the Northeast, uh, which is basically, you know, Stutzman, Barton County and North, all the way to Canada. Um, that was the only 
area that was down slightly from last year, but it's also not traditional pheasant range. Very small numbers that we that we observe on our routes. So any you know change in number is going to be you know a big percentage wise, but it's basically the same as last year to down just a little bit. Uh, our southeast part of our state was just up slightly uh, compared to last year. You know it's it's. It's tough down there, you know, there's a lot of people that I talk to, they still remember, you know, that it used to be a really good area, but we've lost a lot of habitat. There's a lot of rural crop conversion. Uh, so, the, you know, the pheasants, they're just not gonna be there as they used to be. But then moving into our two kind of highlight areas for this year, our Northwest, dist the District 1, uh, had, the, had the highest increase, you know, so as far as pheasants per 100 miles, we had over 100, and, it was 112 birds per 100 miles observed. Uh, you know, and last year was in the 80s, so a really good increase. Uh, and then the number of broods that were in that area were just spectacular. And, you know, it's not just, you know, the northwest corner, it's coming down, it goes into Lake Skakawea. Right around there is very good hunting for, for pheasants and all upland birds too. And then what we're known for, our southwest, and a lot of people still come to North Dakota for, uh, had a good increase this year. You know, it's still not what it used to be. And I don't know if it ever will be. Uh, you know, that's where we've lost the most CRP in the last few years. And that's going to show in our numbers. But this year we did have a, a good increase. Um, you know, not quite as good as that District 1, but uh, there's still, there's going to be a lot of young roosters uh, in the Southwest this year. So one thing that, that we do and the hunters can help us out, you can request wing envelopes from us and go online to our website, do a request or call uh, the main office in Bismarck and we'll send you wing envelopes and it's an outer envelope that you'll write your information on. Uh, we need the date of harvest and the county and that's of the birds that, that are in there. Uh, and it will take pheasant wings, sharp-tailed grouse wings and Hungarian partridge wings. And there's, there's different parts. Uh, you read the instruction on the bag like a pheasant you need a wing and then a foot because we need to tell you know in order to tell adult juvenile we need the spur and the foot of the, of the pheasant. We've been looking at wings for birds since uh, the 1960s so we have a really good data set and then we use that to things we look at our peak hatch and then we can use that in our management like for our wildlife management areas and say you know when we should do our haying dates if our you know like our peak hatch in North Dakota from our data that we, we see is right around June 10th every year, you know, give or take a couple days. Well, we can, you know, pheasants can't, pheasant chicks can't fly for, you know, 10 days after they're born, and then they're very vulnerable to haying practices, so we push our haying dates back because of that. And they've used that in, you know, in farm bills and things like that in Congress, looking at nationwide when we should do these haying dates so that we can, we can protect these upland birds. Now, as a hunter, you want to be out there, be respectful, you know, clean up after yourself, you know, don't leave garbage, don't park in front of approaches, gates where, you know, farming equipment could be going through. If you go through a gate and you open it, close it when you leave, you know, leave things as they were. Um, just be, be careful of other hunters, be aware. Um, we don't require the use of Blaze Orange uh, and upland hunting, but we do highly recommend it. Looking at the results, I mean, it's very encouraging. There's still just a really good amount of you know, young and even adults that we observe this year that it should shape up for a very good fall, not just for pheasants, but for partridge and sharp-tailed grouse as well.